Hello there, my name is Alexander with the Bucket List Mermaid, and today we are going to be doing a bucket list review of one of my favorite cities in the world, and it's because I went there for the entirety of university, and that is Cambridge, England. Now this is just a short snippet of a bucket list review. If this sounds like something that you would want to add to your bucket list, I would highly recommend going and checking out my Cambridge bucket list and all the things that I recommend from living there. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button so that I can keep bringing you free mermaid bucket list content. Now let's go to Cambridge, England. Now the category, I would categorize it as historical and maybe a little bit of luxury depending on what you're doing. You're going to be going around and seeing so many cultural things, so many historical things. I mean, people that you have heard about for your entire life, like Stephen Hawking, Sir Isaac Newton, and so, so, so much more have been here. In addition to so many Nobel Prize winners and houses, the number one school in the world, Cambridge University. Now who is this bucket list idea for? And it is going to be for the people who a, want to get away from London and all the touristy things in London, and B, are scholars, are lovers of knowledge, are lovers of inspiration and history and culture. If you don't like history and culture and pretty buildings, then this is probably not for you, and I would stay in London. But for those of you who want to dive deeper into the world's history, then this place is definitely for you. Best time to go, I would honestly say September to October. Obviously, I live there full time, so I saw all of the seasons. If you're going during the winter, it's just going to be a little cold and rainy, but you're going to miss all the tourists. If you're going in the summer, it gets a little warm. September to October is shoulder season. You might get a lot of the leaves. Students are just starting school. The kids are gonna be in school, so there's gonna be less tourists. And since it is shoulder season, you might find cheaper prices. I also did notice that in spring, that is also a good time to come if you are interested in any like flowers blooming. It's also a great time to go to the Cambridge Botanical Gardens. But more on that in the blog post. Traveling difficulty, it's relatively easy. I mean, you're gonna have to either take a train or a cab. Don't take a cab take a train. My favorite place is to go directly from King's Cross. You can basically get there within 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on which train you take. I went to London so many times during my years at Cambridge, and it is pretty easy to get there. I would definitely get like the train line app or just get a ticket when you're in King's Cross. Then you can see the little Harry Potter trolley. <laughs> so cute. Popularity rating, which basically just states how touristy it is, I would say it's about a 6 out of 10. It is definitely going to be nowhere near the capacity of the chaoticness of London. However, it is a pretty well-known city, so there were, you know, like hop-on and hop-off buses, and especially as you get more towards the city center, you will notice a lot of tourists there. However, compared to other places, not bad. 6 out of 10. Do you need a group or tour? No, I wouldn't say so. You can definitely do it on your own. However, if you are really into history and you want to hear about the actual history of Cambridge, I would definitely recommend doing a group or a walking tour just because these are led by most of the time university alumni or really experienced guides that know the detailed history of Cambridge and you can ask all your questions there. A lot of these tours offer you entrance into Kings. You'll see the majority of the college stroll along the backs and much, much more. If you do want a tour, I have linked so many of them in my blog post so that you can find the right one for you. Well, speaking of tours, go punting. I've linked that in there too. What is the physical difficulty? It's pretty easy. It's pretty flat. You're just basically going to be walking around a lovely European city. So yeah, I would say easy. Nothing too crazy. Just bring some good shoes with some good insoles because chances are you are going to be walking throughout the majority of the day. Now, budget wise, it really depends on where you're coming from. And honestly, probably the train ticket is going to be the most expensive thing. You could just walk around Cambridge for free and be totally fine. If you do want to go into some of the major colleges, like you have to pay an admission fee for King's College, or you know, if you want to go into any of the places, you might need a little bit of extra cash. But overall, I would say just a medium budget. Nothing too crazy. You're just exploring. And last but certainly not least, is it wheelchair accessible? There are some old streets because the streets are old. And when I say old, I mean old. It is possible, you just might be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride. But overall, there are no crazy hills. Everything is pretty much accessible from a wheelchair. I would definitely say that the, like the old cobblestone streets are only in the city center, but all the areas around the city center are pretty modern and they're pretty smooth. So if you feel confident taking on that adventure, then go for it. Go see Cambridge. So what do you think? Do you think that Cambridge would be worth going and putting on your bucket list? Definitely comment below if you would love to go to Cambridge or if you've been to Cambridge and what would 
was your favorite thing that you did? I hope you all enjoy Cambridge as much as I did in my years in university, and we'll see you next week for the next bucket list idea and review.